Hello, my name's Matt Clark. I'm the Mill Production Manager at Harwood Sugar Mill. This year we're celebrating 150 years of operation here at Harwood and I'd like to take you for a tour through our facility. Here at Harwood Mill, our cane is delivered by road transport in these big cane bins on the back of trucks. The bins and the trucks are specially designed to bring our cane to the mill for processing. Each one of the bins and the trucks are tracked. The bins have a tag that tell us that they're coming from the farmer's farm, what pad, what variety. So when we go on to the weigh bridge, we not only track the cane, we weigh the cane. We get a gross weigh first. Once we have the gross weight, the truck will come back and he'll wait for his turn to dump the cane into our tip. At the tip, we track that bin of cane through the entire process to determine the CCS, which in simple terms is the amount of sugar available in that cane. So in those great big bins we've just saw being tipped, we have what we call a cane billet. Now the cane billets are actually the growing stem of the sugar cane chopped into small sections, as you can see. So they fit into the bin and we can maximise payload and get them to the mill. Now the problem is that what we want on the inside of the cane billet on the cellulose fibres or the gas fibres inside the sugar cane billet. Now we can squeeze this with our rollers in our milling train but we can't efficiently extract the maximum amount of juices where the sugar is. So we have to take these billets, smash them to pieces or prepare them for running through the milling train. So we'll go and have a look at that next. So this is when I told you we were going to prepare the cane, this is what we've made. Essentially what we've done is we've taken those cane billets and shredded them and smashed them to pieces through our shredder, which essentially is a great big hammer mill. The reason we've done it is so that we can maximise the amount of juice we can get out of the sugar cane fibre which is contained within inside the billet. Now that we have our prepared cane, we go to the next step of the process which is extraction or run it through the milling train to extract the juice from the fibre. Once the cane has been through our shredder, it is termed prepared cane. That prepared cane is ready to go through our mills. Here at Harvard we have four mills and each of those mills progressively gets tighter and closer together to maximise the amount of juice we squash or squeeze out of the fibre. The number one mill is what we call first express juice and that's what we do our CCS analysis on for cane payment purposes. Once it leaves number one mill, we then start adding water. The water we add comes from the evaporators, which we will talk about later. As we add water to that fiber, we extract more and more of the sugar from the fiber. This is the bagasse fiber coming from our milling train, being fed directly to our boiler to produce the energy that we use here on site. The bagasse is a leftover cellulose fiber once we extracted all of the juice and the sugar out of it. This fibre is quite dry and fluffy and we use it in our boiler station as fuel. So everything you'll see in this presentation is fuelled by the sugar cane plant itself from the steam generated by our boiler. So this juice is full of everything that's coming with the cane plant. It's got fibre, it's got waxes, it's got dirt. So what we have to do is have to clarify it. We end up with a clear juice that looks a little bit like tea. Okay, so the clear juice, which we've must just made in the clarifier, it contains a lot of water. Too much water, in fact, that we can't make sugar cost effectively by trying to boil all the extra water off in the vacuum pans. So what we have here is our evaporator set. The clear juice comes across from the evaporator and we start the evaporation process. Essentially, we're concentrating the juice before we send it to the pan floor to make sugar. As you can see in these vessels, we can see the boiling juice. The really special part about the evaporator station is we use the vapour of the boiling juice to boil the next evaporator. This evaporator boils the next one, the next one and the next one. We can achieve that by applying vacuum to the last evaporator in the set. 
We do that because if you apply a vacuum to a boiling liquid, it boils at a lower temperature. So it's a steam efficiency, and we're also not adding colour to the liquid we're concentrating to make the sugar out of. So out of the evaporation process, we've seen the juice, the clear juice, which was about like tea, and we've evaporated all the extra water we don't need and turned it into liquor, which is essentially a very concentrated sugarcane juice. Now this liquor, we're now preparing to send it to the pan stage where we actually make the sugar crystals. So the liquor we've created down at the evaporator station is pumped across here to the pan floor. Now these vacuum pans is where we actually create the sugar crystal. The sugar crystals are grown under a phenomenon called supersaturation. We evaporate just enough water from the liquor to get the liquor to a supersaturated state and then we add little tiny seed crystals and then we grow the crystals to the size we want and sent down to the centrifuge where we can separate the molasses and the crystal to make raw sugar for the refinery. The molasses comes back up here to the pan floor. We then make the seed crystal out of that molasses and then the syrup from the seed crystals goes to the molasses tank and out to the stock feed. So the sugar boiler, while he's making the crystal, calls, takes a sample or pulls a proof. When he pulls a proof, is when he takes his tiny snapshot sample out of the pan, puts it on a glass slide and looks at it under a microscope. When he's doing this, he's looking at the size and number of the crystals in that mass wheat. That's sort of like a quality control process check along the way to making the crystal the size we want in the vacuum pans before it's sent down to the centrifugal station for separation. So this what you can see here is what we call a filtering screen. It's got little tiny slots in it that allows the syrup to pass through but the crystal stays on the surface of the screen. Pretty similar process to what we've got happening over at the mud filters. So what you're doing now is we're cleaning that screen and we're going to take another charge of massequite, which is the crystal and syrup together, which is made at the pan floor. So that's that there. So in it comes. And that's got the crystals and the syrup together. So you can see the basket filling. It's now got enough in there. That sensor tells us we have enough in there. And what this machine will do is it will speed up and we're using centrifugal force to drive the syrup off the surface of the crystal through the screen, leaving the crystal behind. So now we're going to wash it. Hear that? That's all the syrup leaving the crystal. And when the steam's gone, you'll see that lovely colour of golden sugar. So at its speed, it's pulling about 20 Gs. When we're clarifying the juice, all the mud that's come in with the juice also contains a lot of recoverable juice in the bottom of the clarifier. To recover that juice, we send it across to the mud filter. Now the mud filter is a great big drum with perforated screens and we use vacuum to form the mud cake on the drum. If you have a look here, you can see the screen, which is the same on the unit that's currently operating. It's a stainless steel screen with lots of little tiny holes. In behind that stainless steel screen, there's a lot of pipes which suck the juice through the mud, forming the mud cake you can see on the mud filter that's operating over here. You can see the mud's nice and dry. So what we've done is we've used vacuum and we've washed that mud to get all the recoverable juice. So you end up with this nice, dry mud. Now this mud goes back out to the cane fields as a soil conditioner, and the farmers use it to minimise the amount of fertiliser they have to use to grow the next year's crop. So here we are at the sugar dryer. The sugar from the centrifuge is sent across to our sugar dryer. Essentially our sugar dryer is a great big tumble dryer. By that I mean you can see the sugar forming a curtain inside the dryer drum. Inside the drum is specially produced flights which hold the sugar up to give you a curtain as it rotates around the drum. It's very important that we have a nice curtain of sugar falling because the contact with the air, which is going the opposite direction of the sugar, 
has an effect called evaporative drying. As the air goes past, it dries the extra moisture off the surface of the sugar crystals. It's important that we dry it because if we don't dry it correctly, it will plump, go hard and deteriorate very quickly if we store it that way. So after all those processes we've spoken about so far, this is the finished product. This is the raw sugar produced from the sugar cane fields here in the Clarence Valley. This raw sugar will go into our refinery to be made into refined sugar products out to our customers. So this is our raw sugar shed. This is where we store the raw sugar that is made at our two northern mills, Condong and Broadwater Mill. It's in road transport. We bring it down here and this is where we store it. Come the end of November, halfway through December, this shed should be nearly full with somewhere around a 95 to 100,000 tonnes of raw sugar. That's enough raw sugar to keep our refinery running through the non-crush season, which runs from sort of end of, of November through to the start of June when we start crushing cane again. If we didn't have this facility, we would not be able to run our sugar refinery around the clock all year. So once we make the refined white sugar, we then package it into numerous different packages sizes from one kilogram packs for our retail customers, all the way through to 1200 kilogram bulk bags or FIBCs and 25 tonne truckloads, depending on what the customer requires. Thanks for taking the time to visit our sugar mill here at Harwood. The mill's been here for 150 years and we're very, very proud to be associated with it. If you need any more information, please check out our website. And that'll about do me for the tour. I'll see you next time.